We want to highlight a couple area high school standouts that went on to play college. Uh, and then our coaching now is Kenzie Yoder from Salina is going to come on up and Stephanie Sanders from Bath. And give him a hand. As they come up, uh, coaches on the table, you might see this form. It says coaching from the heart. And it's an awesome little snapshot of the different things we do. I talked with Coach Griffin about chaplains, and, and we want to equip your team with someone, if you want someone, to, to help your coaching staff. Uh, we have James Lampert over here from New Bremen. Kristen Lampert does the girls basketball for New Bremen. He does football. Uh, there might be others in the room, but just so much importance can be placed on the chaplain. We do coaches studies. Uh, we've got about five of them going on right now, which is just once a month learning how to coach today's athletes and how to support one another. Uh, sometimes as a coach, you feel alone. And I'm sure these two ladies uh, will talk about that on their long recruiting trips. Uh, you can share the mic. And, and as we were conversating here, getting ready for this, uh, <laughs> an old high school rivalry came up. And Steph said, we, we can't talk about that. But Kenzie said, we have to. So what was it, WBL championship on the line of basketball? Is that how it went? They beat us every year. In our senior year, we beat them. So Salina was, got back. We did. Yeah. Salina, the dogs got the best of it the senior year. So. <laughs> so we, the, we figured we would let them just have one. That was nice of you. You'd let them have one. <laughs> well, Kenzie, we'll start with you. Uh, went to Salina High School, obviously. Had a FCA and churches all around. But your faith really got came to you at Ohio Northern. It did. Um, I didn't grow up in a family and you know I love my family but we just don't talk about it it's not something that was important sports were huge sports were life you lived them you breathed them you wanted championships you didn't want participation ribbons you <laughs> wanted the first place um, so that was just kind of and that was my whole family my mom's side my dad's side and my stepdad who's from St. Mary's his side too um, and then I was able to go to Ohio Northern and still my my first two years I hit a few bumps um, had some real diversity just you know college kind of hit and I felt along the way the Lord kept placing stepping stones is what I've always called them in my life. My best friend in high school had a huge faith and her family would always kind of pour into me, but I wasn't, I was curious, but I wasn't sure. And then my basketball coach in high school, same thing. He would kind of pour into me and still curious, but wasn't sure. Then I got to college and my basketball coach at Ohio Northern started to, and my now fiance started to, and I just felt like each person just brought me closer and closer to my faith. And I was able to get saved my junior year of college. And that was when when I stopped making my life, sports, 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 championships, championships, it's crazy. The championships came, but I wasn't all about them anymore. They were still great. I loved them, and they're a joy for me, but um, giving that glory to God was really what changed my life. So you, you finish at ONU, then you go to the University of Finley, where you're an assistant basketball coach. What was it like stepping into that realm, going from player to coach? Um, it was, I got an assistant year at Northern as a student, and then I was a GA at Heidelberg for one year. So those yeah. years, and especially even this year, were transitional just because I just stopped playing. Yeah. So my girls listen to the same music as me. They like the same things as me. Um, you know, I have Twitter and Instagram and Facebook just like they do. Um, so it's really very transitional in those first few years, not to like, you have to try to separate yourself a little. Um, but my faith grew more. Um, at Heidelberg, I actually helped initiate an FCA there. Um, they didn't have one really going previously. And then um, Finley was really great because they had a, they, so a lot of them are here. They had a great group that was kind of reigniting their FCA there. And just to watch those kids and how enthusiastic they are about the Lord and how enthusiastic they are about sharing together and um, coming together every week. So from a coaching perspective, it was, it was a challenge, um, just learning the recruiting and how to coach you know, these, this generation of athletes and building those relationships. But it's what I want to do, and it, it, was, it was a fun experience for me. Similar story for you, Steph. Uh, right out of college, finished at Michigan State, got your first job, and then next year you're at Villanova. Did you have some of those same difficulties? The players are your age, same interests and, and lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's definitely challenging. Um, but for me, you know, it, it's just it's just like, you know, Kenzie said, um, you know, for me, it was hard, you know, moving to Villanova because I'm very close to my family and I love Lima. It's a nice, you know, little comfort bubble. Um, and I really it was hard moving away um, that far away. Um, and for me, I remember messaging Andy. I was like, you know, I'm just I miss my people. And um, I, I think I told him, you know, I started 
stopped watching Netflix before I went to bed and I just started reading my Bible because I needed something to comfort me and help me guide me through this experience with all these, um, you know, you know, these challenges that you're, you're, you're coming across. And honestly, once I started doing that, I just felt comfort. Um, Andy also well, um, offered out a family that he knew nearby in the city and they, I reached out to them and um, very nice people, you know, had conversations, emailing back and forth with them. Um, and I just, you know, it just was nice to know that I wasn't alone. <laughs> when I felt alone, I wasn't alone. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And even right here in Lima, I'm sure a lot of these people feel alone sometimes. I know I do. And God's really the only person that can step in and fill that void. Um, and it's great to hear that you both, you know, turn to him in those situations. A lot of times Lima gets bashed, and you're like the opposite of that. You love this place. So give a plug to the students who might be thinking right now, I just want to get out of here. I want to experience Philadelphia or, or overseas or the big city. What it, well, as you look back, why is this so special here? Um, I was definitely in the same shoes that you were going through <laughs> <laughs> the recruiting process. Um, softball, I don't, you know, I don't know if you know, they recruit very early, so um, as early as eighth grade. So when I was in eighth grade, you know, I'm like, I'm mom, dad, I'm out of here. I'm moving across the country. I'll go to the biggest school, you know, wherever, whoever recruits me, um, I'm gone, you know. And as I got older and older and, you know, that decision, I needed to make that decision. Um, I really had to sit down and, you know, talk with my family. I just really realized, you know, I'm surrounded by amazing people, um, not only my family, but, you know, I was coached by Coach Mock, um, Coach Ford, and, you know, honestly, the Bath community, there's just so many good people. I don't know, Coach Holt, you know, Dwayne Holt, who's kind of a classic, um, Coach Pritchard, you know, she, these people just were always around, and that's who, you know, my parents grew up in Bath, and um, I just was surrounded by, you know, the best of the best, and it was like, uh, okay, well, wow, I'm moving on and I'm not going to know anybody. I'm not going to have all these people to lean on and to, you know, talk to after basketball games or my softball games, um, you know, or to talk about how so-and-so had my mom in sixth grade or, you know, <laughs> was, oh, your dad coached, you know, me in high school or whatever it may be. And, um, you know, honestly, I, I do encourage you to move away and experience life, but um, this is home and it really is a good place. It's as good as you make it. And it's as good as, you know, you're as good as the people you surround yourself with. So, um, you know, I just, I, I do, you know, go out, see whatever you want to do and experience you want to do. But, you know, just remember the people that helped you, you know, get there. So, A lot of high school athletes in the audience that have aspirations of playing in college. What's recruiting like for you guys? For, for, for softball, for women's basketball in particular? The trips, the contacts, you know, what can you say and what can you encourage them with as they're putting stuff on social media or yeah. what should they do? What, what do you look for as a coach? Uh, you know, that's, it's hard for you guys. Um, you guys, you know, we, the Facebook thing started becoming a thing when we were kind of in high school and stuff. And that's pretty much all we had. Twitter kind of came in college. But, um, you know, just kind of represent yourself, represent your family, represent your community, um, you know, you treat others how you want to be, you know, treat others how you want to be treated, all that stuff. Uh, you, you know, I look for just good people. You know, I, of course, I want you to be a good athlete, but, you know, I'm looking at after your game, how you go over and talk to your mom and dad. Um, who are you the last one out of the dugout picking up, you know, the buckets that, you know, everybody wants to rush out and go get snacks or whatever it may be. Um, you want to go hang out with your friends, talk to your boyfriend, girlfriend. Um, you know, I'm looking, you know, that, those kind of things. I'm looking at how you hustle on and off the field. Um, you know, what happens when, you know, something maybe on the field didn't go your way. How do you react to that, you know? So those kind of things are what I'm looking for. Um, recruiting's hard, you know, because when you go out, everybody's, you know, you, they have these, in softball, they have specific people to come talk to you behind the dugout. You know, they're not even on the field coaching. It's so, it's changing. Um, but everybody's the best player on the field, you know, it's like, oh, really, you know, you have four shortstops for me that are all Americans, and that, uh, it's like, all right, you know, and it's, it's fun, it's a good experience, um, I've had to stay the night in a couple airports, that's not the, you know, that's not the, you know, most glorious part of the job, but, you know, you get to travel a lot of cool places and meet a lot of, a lot of neat people, and, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a blessing, honestly, so. Kenzie? Um, from the women's basketball perspective, the best thing I can tell, and this is, you know, I talk to football coaches, baseball coaches, softball coaches, all of us, 
it's happening earlier and earlier, which is scary, especially for those of you who are parents in the room and those of you who are athletes. Um, and like Steph said, from a social media standpoint, we check it. We've had multiple players at the Division Three, Div Division Two, where I was at Finley, and then I've heard my friends at Division One who do not recruit you because of what is put on your social media. So it represents you. So go home, write down, these are the three things I want to stand for, and then make sure that's what's represented on your page because it, that's real. Um, academics, I can't say it enough. We talk about it with our own teams. If there's a player, I just told my table tonight, if there's a player who's just as good as you, you guys are pound for pound measured up with each other, they're always going to recruit the better, the better student. Always. So some of you think, well, I'm just going to be good enough that that's not going to matter. If anybody else is just as good as you, they're going to take that player over you. Um, and then, you know, I guess a tip to you guys that kind of maybe not all coaches would share with you is every recruiter has the gift of gab. That's why we're there. You know, we, we, want, to, we want to sell you on our school. We want you to come there. Ask other people about what that program is really like. People who've either played against that coach or played with those players on that team or, you know, really do your homework because you want to you wanna go and send your kids or you as an athlete want to go play for a program that has good values and good thing, good morals or things that you stand for as well. You don't just want to go play somewhere that really wants you or that's going to give you the best gear or that's going to say they're the best, but then you get there and they're really not. I always tell people you want to go somewhere that over um, that under promises but over delivers not the other way around they're going to promise you a bunch of things and you're not going to get half of those things so i think that that's one thing for you guys to do is make sure you do your homework awesome well thank you so much kenzie yoder from salina and stephanie sanders from bath thank you. Thank you.